Hey Ted here. We've got a aquarium lighting project and uh, this is going to be a 100 watt uh, LED 6500K uh, aquarium light that I'm actually using to replace uh, two uh, actually I'm using I'm using two of these to replace two 250 watt metal halide uh, bulbs over my 250 gallon aquarium and uh, I've got one operating. This is uh, actually the second one I'm putting together. The first was a test and I figured I'd do a little video on how this thing works. It's very easy. It costs about $150 for all of the components uh, including the heat sink here. Now this heat sink is an older one I had but you can um, uh, you can buy these things online at a few different places. Uh, LED supply. Um, just uh, look for large heat sinks and you'll you'll find them wherever the, the, these kind of LEDs are sold. The uh, LED here in this case is a 100 watt um, LED. It's very durable. It's basically made of a matrix of um, uh, 100 1 watt LEDs. So there's uh, there's actually a 10 by 10 grid on here of 1 watt LEDs. And then the uh, power input are these two little tabs on the side and I'm going to show you how to figure that out in a second. I've got my soldering iron um, ready to roll here. I've got a, a 100 watt driver which I bought from the same place. These came from um, I think it's called Deals Extreme or or Deals Express. I'll, I'll see if I can post a link to that. Um, very inexpensive. You have to watch out when you're buying these things. Now, this set should cost you about a hundred bucks uh, for the driver and LED. The um, you have to be careful though because if you look around a lot of places will sell them for about that but then when you look at the shipping charge it's thirty five forty dollars in shipping these uh, are shipped from uh, Hong Kong so uh, it takes a while to get them usually a week to a week and a half if you're lucky and um, but you do just you know you want to be careful and look around and make sure that you uh, you get something that is um, uh, you know, uh, priced right uh, in, in, with shipping included. The other thing that I've also seen, uh, which may be a little bit more appropriate for some people who aren't, don't quite have the you know soldering skills and everything, um, is that they do make these in an enclosed, uh, moisture-proof version. A little bit more expensive. I, I think it may be another twenty dollars. Uh, I found a way to mount this one inside my hood. Um, uh, not not necessarily up to uh, UL rating, but it's in there and it's just working fine. So I'll show you that as well. In the meantime, what we're going to do here is um, I've got a, a set of black and white leads, which will be my 110 power. I've stripped uh, one, one side was actually already stripped because I actually stole this off of my fluorescent fixture. But the other side, I just stripped a, a very short. Let's see if you can see that. Just a very tiny bit of the insulation off. This is where it's going to connect to the PC board. So this will be the AC power. And then I've got um, a red and black lead that I'm going to put for uh, positive and negative on the power supply. And then I've got another red and black lead over here that I'm going to use for the um, LED. And I've got these quick disconnects, which you can buy at any hardware store that I crimped on, um, that will allow me to connect and disconnect this thing um, so I can take it apart if I need to without tearing everything or unsoldering things from the... Um, uh, from the hood. So uh, I also have these uh, 440 screws which I bought at Lowe's. I'm going to use those to uh, lock the thing down. Of course my um, uh, handy heat sink which is a, a very large aluminum heat sink. Uh, it's also fairly heavy. You can see it's got a lot of fins on it. And I've got these uh, this pattern of holes drilled in it which was actually from a prior project where I was actually going to put um, uh, probably about 40 uh, 3 watt Luxian stars on it. Um, that, the, the problem with that is just that the driving mechanism and everything is very very expensive so I've been kind of watching the market and found this thing uh, recently which is now available to the public. So got some silicone grease. It's a really uh, fairly simple thing. I just um, it, it just uh, so happens that if I look around here uh, for the right hole pattern I actually find one that fits and that this was just um, by uh, by sheer luck that this old project I was working on happened to have a whole pattern that fit perfectly. Um, it is important to keep these things cool. If you don't they will burn out and they uh, they will not only burn out but they will smell horribly bad and um, if you have a significant other they will be um, extremely upset with you and yes that is the voice of experience talking. 
So, put a little bit of silicone down there. I'm, I'm pushing it down. These things are uh, uh, very, very durable. I'm actually pushing this thing down until I start to feel, uh, and, and, and moving it around until I start to feel a little resistance from the two pieces of metal rubbing against each other. I don't want to try to get my um, uh, all of my thermal conductivity through the silicone grease itself. That just helps a little bit. What I'm really trying to do is get some metal to metal contact and just fill in the gaps with the silicone grease. So I got that. I'm going to put these screws in and I'm not going to uh, make you suffer through me screwing these screws in. So I'm going to put this on pause for a second and get the screws in and come back. Okay, I've got my screws in. Uh, I've locked them down uh, fairly hard. I mean, I put some good uh, some good torque on them. Obviously, you don't want to strip them out, but um, this, is, like I said, it is a, a pretty hardy LED, um, so you can uh, you can lock it down tight. Uh, as a matter of fact, the first one I probably shouldn't even say this. Uh, I actually dropped it into my aquarium. Um, the the whole light heat sink and everything. I uh, pulled it out blew it off, dried it off, um, let it dry a little bit, a few minutes later turned it back on and it works fine. So, next thing we need to do is identify the uh, positive and negative side of this. Uh, we're going to use red for positive, black for negative, that's the uh, traditional uh, wire colors. The one thing that uh, I need to show here, and I don't know if it's going to be, if you're going to be able to see it or not, I've got a uh, very, very strange lighting here but up in this corner here I'll just kinda of draw this X on it while I'm at it there's a there's a plus sign for positive now the um, the, the thing to know about this LED is this plus sign is positive that doesn't mean that this rail over here is the positive terminal this rail over here is actually the positive terminal it is the terminal you can basically how these things work is these are are going across the rows and the the um, the one that is closest to the to the top where that plus sign is, so that plus is kind of the top. If you if you do it this way, the rail that is is uppermost is actually the plus. So I'm going to put my plus on here so I don't screw it up while I'm while I'm soldering. Okay. The next thing you need to know, um, another nice thing that that makes these uh, LEDs very nice and easy to work with is that they are electrically isolated from the uh, metal base that they're mounted on. Uh, but when you are soldering this thing, if if you're doing like I am and and putting it on a big aluminum heatsink, which uh, obviously you need to put it on some kind of metal heatsink, uh, the the uh, wires when you wire to this thing you have to be very careful that you don't uh, get them down uh, too close to the aluminum or or the uh, heat sink surface because you will um, you know you will cause a short there so what I'm going to do is basically uh, thread these uh, wires through a hole here um, yeah I should put the positive one in first Okay, so there's my positive wire sticking up through that side, and I'll put my negative wire sticking up through this side over here. There was a time when I was uh, in a little bit better aim than this. Okay, there we go. Okay, so now I've got both of my positive and negative leads sticking up here. I just have to get them soldered to this little tab. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to very, very gently, I'm going to push down on the plastic here so I don't break anything, very gently tilt this tab up a little bit just so when I put my wires on it, I'm not, you can see I'm pushing down here making sure that I, I put some pressure so I don't break that, that plastic housing. And now I can actually bring my wire up from underneath and that'll help me um, prevent any possible problem with uh, shorting out on the aluminum. Now I just need to take my handy dandy very old nasty uh, soldering iron here which has been around forever and uh, get a little get a little solder on it get that get on that tab and just solder that wire on just like that okay my positive side 
Get my negative side set up here. A little bend in that so I can get it up through the hole. A little bit more. Okay, so now I got my lead coming through there. And a little bit more solder. If you're not a uh, someone who knows how to solder too well, just I would imagine it's probably about 75,000 how to solder tutorials on uh, I need to stop talking and do this um, how to solder tutorials on uh, YouTube but basically um, the thing to do well look at that mess I made on there um, the thing to do is uh, make sure that you are uh, creating a, a, a thermal junction between the tip of the soldering iron and your work you're not um, you're, you're heating up the work and then letting the work melt the solder as opposed to like melting a blob of solder and trying to drop it onto whatever it is you're soldering so heat up this little tab try to get the so some a little bit of liquid solder on the tip hit the uh, hit uh, get that little drop of liquid solder on both the wire and the tab and then just feed a little bit of solder into it until it uh, covers the hole. Um, but you need both pieces hot enough so that the, the uh, solder adheres to it. So, actually, now that I look at this, this just needs a little bit more attention here. I can actually see through the, through the hole. There we go. Okay, so that's that. Now I've got my, my heat sink, my um, LED ready to go and uh, I also have this little unit I bought which I'm going to try this is a reflector that actually typically you would put a, um, a lens on the end of but I found on the other one I don't really need a lens because I'm getting some good spread across about two feet of the top of the tank um, but I, 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 I want to just try this this thing you really need to glue it on it, it, it pops in and it, uh, you know, it sits on a couple little holes here but it doesn't hold tight it's not going to stay on uh, with this thing turning off and heating up and cooling down so it will need a little bit of glue if I'm going to continue to use it but I'll try that out later okay so that guy's done oops sorry about that bump the camera let's put this aside and next project is wiring up the driver 